Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mesa Public Schools Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Brianna, and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your question to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Columbia College Chicago. Hi everybody, my name is Alfredo Echeverria. I work here at Columbia College Chicago, um, where I work exclusively with students coming from Arizona. So uh, to get started, as you can see, Columbia College Chicago is located in Chicago, Illinois. We are located in the South Loop neighborhood of the downtown area. Uh, we are also a four year liberal arts college uh, that tends to lean more into the uh, creative industry. So if you're a student that attempts to flourish in the creative environment or, um, you know, uh, gets along with other creatives, this might be a really good place for you. Uh, so to get started, um, in terms of numbers, we are uh, considered a medium-sized college. We have close to 7,000 students as part of our student body. Uh, a majority of those are going to be undergraduate students such as yourselves, uh, and we also have a very small graduate uh, student body as well on campus. Uh, when it comes to currently enrolled students that we brought in this current year, we had close to 2,000 new students enroll. Um, a majority of those were freshman uh, students, but we are also very transfer friendly. So um, if it doesn't work out for you, your first, uh, you know, enrolling here as an incoming freshman, uh, we always encourage students to enroll at a local community college or university, earn some type of uh, college credit and then transfer over to Columbia. Uh, when it comes to the majors and programs, we do have a, a combination of 60 different uh, programs that we have. So it's usually majors, minors, online certificates, and graduate degrees that we offer at Columbia. Uh, when it comes to residence uh, halls, 71% uh, of freshmen live on campus their first year, uh, I, mainly for two reasons that I like to stress, location, uh, you get to live in downtown Chicago as a college student. And the second one is access. So at some point, you'll be earning some kind of internship or job opportunity. A lot of those um, opportunities tend to be in the downtown area anyway. So um, it's a great location, again, for um, living on uh, downtown and again, access to all those different opportunities that will exist uh, for you your four years here. When it comes to diversity and inclusion, um, this is a big part of our identity here at the college. You'll see it all over our website, represented in our student body and our staff, our faculty. Um, about 57% of students identify as students of color and about a third of students identify uh, within the LGBTQIA spectrum. So again, that's a big part of our identity, whatever walks of life you come from, identities you have, life experience you bring, you know, we wouldn't really be doing our part as a college if we weren't providing a platform for you to share your stories with us. Um, when it comes to the average high school GPA for an incoming freshman, it's usually at 3.34. Of course, we do um, review applications holistically. So if you're not at that you know, GPA, don't sweat it. We'll look at everything else that you submit, like portfolios, resumes, recommendations, all that uh, other stuff. And we are also test free. So um, we know some students don't test well when it comes to standardized testing. So this year, we won't even look at those standardized tests um, should you submit them. Uh, when it comes to financial aid, um, there are three ways for you to earn the full amount of financial aid that the college can offer any incoming um, freshman applicant. The first one is completing an application with an official transcript on file, which makes you eligible for an academic merit-based scholarship. The second one is uh, submitting a FAFSA and making sure that you add Columbia's FAFSA code to the application uh, that makes you eligible for a financial need-based scholarship. And then the third one is a talent-based scholarship. Uh, that's uh, usually uh, optional for any BA applicant, highly encouraged, um, and it is required for any BFA or BMU. So 99% of freshmen earn some kind of financial aid from us, and then 97% of transfer students earn some kind of financial aid from us. 
when it comes to the type of learning environment you'll be in, we do uh, consider ourselves, you know, a hands-on immersion in your field from year one type of environment. So what does that mean? Some colleges and universities in the United States might make you focus on your liberal arts requirements, your first two years, and then your major related classes, your last two years. At Columbia, we don't do that. Um, if you're passionate about photography or musical theater or graphic design, we let you jump in into those classes, you know, year one, semester one, day one, um, if that's something that you want to do. Uh, class sizes are pretty small. There are about 15 to 18 students per class. Um, mainly, we want you to be able to network and connect with your classmates, because while they'll be your collaborators in the classroom, they're also going to be your collaborators, you know, uh, four years from now once you graduate. Um, and faculty, they do live what they teach. We make sure of that. It's pretty common to hear students earn some kind of internship or job opportunity um, from their instructors. Really briefly, I know we talked about this um, in our second slide, uh, but these are the general overview of um, the programs we offer. So we have audio communication and writing, media arts, performing arts and visual arts and business. Um, when it comes to the student life and what life is like on campus, we have more than 70 different clubs and organizations. Um, you know, some are always starting, some end, um, but there's always something that exists. So whatever it is you like, I'm sure that exists already. Um, so we have things like Black Student Union, Latino Alliance. We have a Quidditch team, a fencing team. Um, and if there isn't a club that doesn't exist already, we always encourage students to connect with our student life office um, and create your own club. Um, we do have over hundreds of different campus events every year. Um, this, you know, I always tell students there should never be a reason why you're bored. There's always something to do, always something to see. Um, when it comes to residence centers, we do have them designed specifically for creative students. So um, there's one in particular called the Dwight. You know, we have one floor that's, that's, one floor that's completely vacant. Um, and we actually encourage you to graffiti the walls, to create murals on the walls. Uh, we want you to exert that creative energy in a healthy way. And we have a space for you uh, like that on campus. Um, so that's uh, Columbia in a nutshell. Um, again, my name is Alfredo Echeverria. I am your admissions representative here at the college. You can email me there, give me a call there. And whenever you're ready, you can create an application at columbia.edu slash apply. Um, I do thank you for having us here today. Um, and I'll hand it back to our facilitator. Thank you so much, Alfredo. Next up, we'll hear from Michigan Technological University. Great. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. So I am Nanette Carlson, and I am the regional admissions manager that works with all of the students coming from Arizona. So Michigan Technological University is a comprehensive research university with a STEM focus. So with just over 7,000 students, we are the perfect size for a student who wants to feel at home and also have almost endless opportunities. We're located in Houghton, Michigan in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Our students build and launch nano satellites. They make prosthetic ankles better and they connect robots with kids. This year alone, Michigan Tech undergraduates will spend 110,000 hours working alongside faculty mentors on paid research, Huskies go on to earn the 15th highest early career pay in the country at $67,000 a year. It's a future like no other for our graduates. Included in uh, tuition students and fees at Michigan Tech, they have access to all of the things that you could see listed on the screen here. Uh, once on campus, our Huskies experience a truly residential college experience with tight knit dorm communities and more than 240 student clubs and organizations. We have NCAA Division II sports for men and women, including co-ed esports and also Division I men's hockey. So now let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. So we've always had a free application at Michigan Tech. We are not a common app school, but we do have our own. So all you need to do is go to our website. Um, and once a student uh, application is complete, it's about two to three weeks from applying and submitting your transcripts that a student will hear a decision from us. We require a 2.75 high school GPA with a minimum 22 ACT. 
uh, or without test scores, we'd like to see a 3.0 GPA. So we are a test optional school. Uh, the average freshman arrives on campus with a 3.78 GPA and a 27 ACT. So world-class education is an investment. Non-Michigan residents are looking at a total cost of around $51,000 per year. So you can see that over in the far right, um, the gold circle. Uh, note that tuition is a flat rate for 12 to 18 credits. We want to help students budget for their annual expenses while being able to explore courses outside of their major. More than 90% of our students qualify for financial aid and a wide range of automatic merit scholarships and competitive scholarships. In addition, co-ops and internships help students earn money while gaining incredibly valuable practical experience. More than 415 companies recruit our students on campus at the nation's second largest career fair. So now let's talk a little bit about some uh, campus traditions. Um, a celebration of all things winter is Winter Carnival. So each February, students get a four day weekend to build snow sculptures, they race dogs, they compete in human ice bowling, and they just enjoy the inevitable snow. Uh, which they average about 218 inches of snow a year. Uh, and also broom ball. If you're not familiar with what broom ball is, think hockey, but with a ball on shoes and with brooms instead of sticks. And then we also have our Parade of Nations. This is where we capture the spirit and unity of our incredibly diverse community by parading through the city in traditional dress, followed by celebrations across campus. And then cardboard boat racing would not isn't always successful, but it's always a highlight of homecoming. So you can see the, the group here in front, they weren't so successful, but they wish uh, they definitely had a very nice day um, to uh, go into the lake. So um, I want to thank you for joining me tonight. So that's just a little snippet of Michigan Tech. And here is my contact information. You can email me or you uh, also can text or call at the number listed. So thanks again for joining us this evening. Thanks so much, Nanette. Next, we will hear from Wentworth Institute of Technology. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm going to share my screen with you. One second here. All right, so my name is Pete Nelson. I'm one of the assistant director of admissions at Wentworth. Uh, we are a school located right in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, great area to be in. We're right by Fenway Park. Socks didn't make it through. It's a little quieter right now. Uh, we're right in the heart of the city. It's a really fun city, absolutely packed with universities, kind of one right on top of the other. Um, we do have housing right on campus. We're on one 31 acre campus in the heart of the city. We are one of the colleges of the Fenway. So it's a cool consortium of us and four other schools. It is us, Emanuel College, Simmons University, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and the Mass College of Art and Design. So as a Wentworth student, you can take classes, you can cross-register at any of those schools. We share some clubs and intramurals and social events. So you get the perks of a smaller school. We're about 4,300 students, small class size, average class size is about 18 students. So you really get to know your fellow classmates and professors. It's a tight knit community, but then it opens it up to resources at all these other schools that are literally right next to us down one street leading up to Fenway Park. So if you've never been to Boston before, come on by a really fun, small city to be in. So this is a list of all of our majors, definitely heavy STEM school. Um, so we have a lot of engineering, computing degrees like computer science, cybersecurity, computer networking, computer information systems. We have applied math, applied sciences, management degrees uh, like business management, construction management, and then architecture and design degrees are to our interior design and industrial design. So heavy STEM focus here. There's two master's degrees listed on here too, our, our four plus one degrees, so you can stay get your master's and the two that are listed here, architecture and computer science. We also have a bunch of other engineering one-year programs. These are two listed here, our most popular. All of our majors are hands-on project-based. So all those small classes, like I was talking about, 
all going to be project oriented. So no big lecture halls, all going to get a good foundation, get use of all the machinery on campus, 3D printers and scanners and fabrication lab and ro robotics lab and mechanics lab. So you definitely get a, a good feel of what it's like for when you get to your uh, in the career field that you'll have a good understanding of what you'll be doing when you get into your co-op. That's I'll go over next. The biggest draw to the school is every student completes two co-ops. So um, that is when instead of class, you are working full-time in the field. So this slide lists a couple companies that we work with. Co-ops can be done all over the country. So some students will choose to go back home, do their co-op back home. You have a co-op advisor that's gonna help you find a, a good company to work for, um, a place that you can see yourself living and working after you graduate, because there is a great chance that that company will offer you a job right from graduation. So during these semesters, and most co-ops are done, um, students do one, the first one, they're the spring of their junior year, and then the second one, the fall of their senior year. So you're working 30 to 40 hours a week, you're not in class, so you don't have to worry about classes to you just get to focus on getting real experience, building a network of professionals. Um, and again, you got all this um, experience in your classroom. So by the time you get to your co-op, you, you do have a good foundation. And that's why co-op companies really like hiring Wentworth students. So you do graduate. We are still four years, graduate with a bachelor's degree and almost a full year of experience. So. Um, again, your co-op advisor helps you find your job. Uh, for admissions, we'll go. We'll move into admissions requirements. So we're on the Common App. We uh, we are a school where you do apply to a major. So the perks about that are that you're it's going to be a heavy focus on your major, less humanities and social sciences classes. It's going to be a heavy focus on your major, and you're in those classes right away in those four years, so you can kind of prepare for your co-op. Um, we require two letters of recommendation. You list extracurricular activities, uh, your college essay, um, and then you'd have your high school send your transcripts, and that is all. We read holistically, so we'll review all of these. We are test optional, so SATs, ACTs not required. If you took them and you want to send them in, we'll gladly review them, but they are not required. We do have three different deadlines. We have two early action deadlines and regular decision deadlines. We don't have any early decisions. So all of these, none of these applications are binding. You just let us know by May 1st, whether you'd like to come or not. Um, every student as well is eligible for a merit scholarship. So, and these are automatic. You don't have to apply for them. So when, if you apply in your accept, and you're accepted, in your acceptance letter, we'll list your merit scholarship. Then on top of that, definitely fill out a FAFSA to see what you were awarded for FAFSA, like grants and loans. Uh, and then you're, we also partner with Scholarship Universe and we'll send you a login to Scholarship Universe. I'd say if anything, to take anything away from today about Wentworth, if you're really looking for that hands-on project-based curriculum, and if you really want to be in the field, you know, working, getting that real experience in your co-op, then Wentworth is a great choice for you. Boston's a really fun city to be in. Um, we are a ton going on. We're near Fenway and you know, all the museums. We're a Division three school, and there's plenty of clubs and, and academic clubs, social clubs, identity clubs. So definitely a lot going on student life. And I'll put my um, email address in the chat if anyone has any questions after today. Feel free to send me an email. Thank you so much, Pete. Next up, we'll hear from the College of Engineering at the University of Arizona. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly. I am part of the team here at the University of Arizona College of Engineering. It's so great to see you all here. And oh my goodness, what awesome options you have in front of you tonight. It's so cool to see all the diversity of options that are out there for students. And so thank you for tuning in tonight and, uh, and checking us all out. Uh, so I have a few brief slides here for us, and then we are going to spend some time. I want to uh, make sure I have time to show you a pretty cool new feature that we just launched here um, to tour our campus virtually. 
So first things first, if you are thinking about engineering at the University of Arizona, we are just part of that main U of A application. We are on the Common and Coalition app, but if you're thinking about engineering, you're just gonna use the same application. There's nothing additional you need to fill out. You simply need to indicate that you are interested in engineering. So you actually won't see aerospace or mechanical or chemical that the specific majors listed you're just going to look for what we call engineering all majors on that application and for u of a you self-report all of your high school classes and grades including anything you're taking your senior year uh, previously engineering at u of a did re require a test score but that is no longer the case we are test optional which means if you have a test score and you want to submit it for consideration you can use it to help your application but there is no penalty for not submitting and it cannot hurt your application by any means. So we are available now. The application is live. You can apply anytime throughout the year whenever you are ready. I know the holiday season is always a really popular time to apply. You have some time off of school. You know, it's a good way to unwind from uh, Thanksgiving dinner, fill out that application, right? <laughs> so it's a great time of the year to apply. And once you fill out that application, you can usually hear back within two to three weeks. So uh, we recommend doing that sooner rather than later. And the way it works for U of A is you'll know your merit aid offer as well as soon as you get your acceptance letter. So it's very straightforward. And again, we are just part of that UA application, although we do review applications for engineering. As you can imagine, our engineers do more math and science than the average Wildcat. So that's definitely something we're looking for when it comes to applications. And if I could give advice to students who are considering a career in STEM in college, it's definitely to make sure you're taking those math and science classes in high school as much as you can, as many as you can. It's going to really help you feel prepared. So our college is about 3,000 undergrads at U of A, which is over 40,000 students. So we kind of like to think we're the best of both worlds. You get that smaller class size, that smaller major, that smaller college experience in the backdrop of a university where you really have endless possibilities when it comes to tier one research, division one sports, 600 student clubs, all sorts of things to get involved with. So our student body typically incoming freshmen have an average 3.75 five core on weighted GPA. Again, that's an average. We are hoping students have at least a 3.0 when it comes to admission for engineering. This year we had 625 new freshmen from all over um, the country and the world. And we're also really proud that our class is typically uh, more women in engineering than average uh, and a lot of great diversity in our college too. So we think that makes the learning experience better for everybody. As you can see, we have about 15 students to one faculty in terms of ratio. So you really can't expect those small class sizes, especially when you get to your um, upper level coursework. And engineering has about a 92% first year retention rate, which means most of our Wildcat engineers come back the second year, which we think really speaks to the community in our college and all the support that we offer. So as I mentioned, when you apply, you're just going to apply to engineering. That's because we're going to give you some time to really feel things out first semester. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to stop you from declaring the major you want. This just means we want to give you some time to get your feet wet, start taking those intro classes. We have a great intro course the for first year where you get to actually meet all of our department heads and faculty and really dive into what do all of these majors mean and which one's going to get me to where I want to go. So there's no pre-professional professional phase. So when you're admitted to engineering, you are admitted to any one of the programs. It's not competitive. There's no caps or quotas. When you are ready to declare, usually the first semester students will do this, you declare your major and you're off on your merry way. If all of our students said they want to do mining engineering, we find a way, but that's not what happens. Students split themselves up very nicely and you're able to get off on your path once you are sure that you are on the right track. And as I mentioned, you learn about all of 16 of these programs in that first year course, which is also a great place to meet your peers in engineering. So alphabetically from aerospace to systems, there are some amazing options for you at UA Engineering. I love this photo. This is our Baja off-road race car. We actually had the international contest for Baja SAE here in Tucson last year, which was really awesome. Great opportunity for our team. And there are so many ways to apply what you are learning in these majors outside of the classroom as well, which we'll touch on here in a second. But some really unique majors here at U of A Engineering outside the classroom. 
over 40 organizations, tier one research, uh, themed communities and dorms just for our engineering students, and a lot of ways to plug in and get those internships and career support. And if there's one thing I wanna leave you with, I uh, we have a great way to stay connected with us. Uh, we have a, actually a brand, brand new uh, virtual tour for the College of Engineering where you can actually look inside a lot of our labs and spaces. So we're really excited about this. It's actually so no, new, it's not even on the website yet, but I'm gonna drop the link in the chat so you all get a chance to explore, look in some of those labs where you can learn and uh, interact with faculty and your peers. Uh, so we look forward to hearing from everyone else tonight. If you wanna have any questions, feel free to drop us in the chat. We'd love to hear from you or follow up. Thanks, everyone. Bear down. And I think Kate's coming up next. Thanks so much, Kelly. Um, next up, we will hear from the College of Architecture, Planning, and Landscape Architecture at the University of Arizona. All right. Hi, everyone. So nice to see um, quite a few students here this evening. So my name is Kate Fitzpatrick. Um, I am the recruitment coordinator for the College of Architecture, Planning and Landscape Architecture, which we call CAPLA for short as our acronym. Um, so this is a picture of our facilities here. Um, we're actually working on renovating um, the building to the right because we've seen such a huge interest and influx in student enrollment in the past few years. So you'll have that to look forward to as a new student. So uh, Kelly laid it out pretty perfectly. Um, she's also representing just a college at the University of Arizona, and I am also representing just Kapla. Um, I know the U of A is presenting tomorrow evening if you'd like to tune into that. So who are we? We are one of the first universities that implemented sustainable design across all of our pedagogy, learning in arid regions, really understanding sustainable climates and planning, especially with the current state of our planet, and especially where we're located in the United States. We're the only undergraduate accredited Bachelor of Architecture program in the state of Arizona. And that's uh, an accreditation done by NAB, which is the National Architectural Accrediting Board. Our curriculum encompasses many different topics and disciplines such as sustainable um, built environments, alternative energy, water conservation, preservation, if you're interested in affordable housing, equitable housing, uh, and how that affects our society. Um, Kapla might be a good fit for you. I think what makes our curriculum especially remarkable is that students are being prepared to make real change in the world, whether it's right here in our backyard in the Sonoran Desert or elsewhere in the world. We do have a very large alumni uh, community as well with over 4,200 different alumni spread out all across the country. So you'll have that to look forward to for connection uh, once you are a Kapla grad yourself. So we have three undergraduate programs here in Kapla. The School of Architecture and the School of Landscape Architecture and Planning are two schools. Um, the first major is the Bachelor of Architecture, which once again is NAB accredited and is a five-year program, which is very common for architecture programs. Then we have the Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Built Environments and the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, which are both four-year programs. Um, so if you'd like to get connected a little bit more to talk about the difference between these, um, I'm more than happy to do that. Just some general information about applying to the University of Arizona. Uh, we are a common coalition application university, or you can apply via online on our website. For architecture specifically, there is no supplemental application. There's no portfolio review that you have to turn in. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're looking at other architecture programs across, across the United States uh, and across Arizona as well. A little bit about our culture. We're a very small familial college here in Kapla. Our students know our faculty and our faculty know how to support our students. We have about 650 undergraduate uh, students. Uh, the majority of those are in our Bachelor of Architecture program. And we also have um, some students online as well. Our culture is very innovative. Uh, that might seem obvious to you in an in a environment like architecture and design, but just based off the nature of our field, it's really special to be able to visit our spaces and see how we've drafted this environment of curiosity, of design, of innovation. So it's very fun to be a part of. There's plenty of opportunities for internships, which is really embedded into the culture of architecture, clubs, study abroad, and, and a lot of other ways to, uh, to find engagement. 
there's a lot of engagement between students, faculty, staff, alumni, especially in the Tucson community at large. Um, so these are a few pictures of our studio spaces. Sometimes you're working independently and sometimes the professor might be lecturing, but nevertheless, our class sizes are gonna stay very small. Um, and I think that's very evident here in these photos that we are trying to um, really harness this professional degree and this professional atmosphere. We do encourage our students also to get out of the classroom to engage in the built environment, which is so special here in Tucson. We do have the largest known materials lab in the Southwest. Some folks even say the whole United States. So we do a lot of things here in the materials lab, welding, carpentry, woodwork, mixed materials. We have kiln, we have 12 3D printers. Uh, we even have a robotic arm. So if you're a hands-on type of person and you really enjoy um, some of those aspects of design and just getting you know, creative and you know, uh, experimenting with different materials, then you're really gonna enjoy our materials lab and our model lab as well. So this is an extension of our materials lab. Um, this has laser cutters, 3D printers. Um, so it's pretty special to get hands-on experience with some of these, um, some of this equipment and these printers as early as your second year here in Kapla. Our faculty, um, our, excuse me, our student to faculty ratio is 14 to one here in Kapla. Um, and your classes are only gonna get smaller as you progress into the program. Our faculty stem from all over the world. Uh, Bo Yang, on the upper right-hand corner there is a landscape architecture researcher. And he often travels between uh, the United States and China and Tokyo and brings students with him on those different research excursions as well. And then of course we have professors that are very dedicated to the Tucson community, such as Valerie Lame, who do more community work, even real estate development that is wrapped into landscape architecture and architecture uh, and design builds as well. So you as a student could actually be part of a program um, or a project where you see the fruits of your labor. We're actually in the middle of building our 13th row house, a sustainable row house here on campus. And those homes get gifted to families in need here in Tucson. So you're, you're actively making a change and an impact in your community, which is really special. So that's it for me. I want to leave my contact information up here in case you'd like to connect. Um, I highly recommend coming to Tucson for a visit if at all possible. Our facilities are incredible. They're very impressive. And I think they speak to the hands-on nature and the hands-on design of our programs overall. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll pass it back over to Brianna. And last but not least, we will hear from Texas Tech University. Awesome. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Give me one second. Awesome. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started by introducing myself. My name is Javeli Barasa, and I am a missions counselor here at Texas Tech. I am one of many. We do have a, quite a big team that does cover the whole nation. And so uh, if you want to get connected to your specific admissions counselor for your area, uh, we can definitely uh, make that possible. I can go ahead and leave some links at the end. Um, so we just want to thank you guys so much for your time and taking the time to, you know, spend your Monday night to listen to all these amazing universities and programs that we have to offer. So I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, with the good stuff about Texas Tech. Um, so these are just at a glance, um, some things about us. We do have over 40,000 students enrolled with us. We are quite a large campus. We are the second largest campus in the nation in terms of the land that we sit on. We have about six miles of buildings um, that are solely dedicated towards our students and research and all the opportunities that we have here at Texas Tech. We do also have a 19 to one student to teacher ratio. So it is gonna be a, probably what you're familiar with in your classrooms right now, um, if not maybe a little bit smaller. So we do have that 19 to one student to teacher ratio that we are proud of here at Texas Tech because we have increased in students that are enrolled with us. And as we've increased, we went ahead and also hired more faculty to go ahead and enhance the classroom experience. Uh, we also are a tier one research university here at Texas Tech. So there's a lot of opportunities for students who are wanting to go ahead and work on different type of research studies that we have going on here you are able to participate in uh, those studies as early as your undergraduate degree. Uh, we are about 52% male and 48% female. 
And so you, you will see that we're pretty much half and half here at Texas Tech. We do have the average, the average GPA of the student that is entering our freshman class is going to be a 3.6. So that is gonna be the average GPA for the student that is uh, attending Texas Tech or that is accepted with us. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue of where we are located. And so uh, we are located in Texas, but we are specifically located in the city of Lubbock. And so there's quite a bit to do in Lubbock. Um, the area that I'm from specifically, uh, there's not a lot of outdoor activities that you're able to partake in, but once you go into campus and once you're in the city of Lubbock, there is so much outdoor activities. You are able to go into the rec center and sign up to go snowboarding and skiing in New Mexico, which is about two hours away. There's water rafting and caverns that you're able to go and explore. So I always like to tell my students that it is a little bit more of an outdoor campus and the things that you are able to do and the flexibility in that. You do experience all four seasons in the city of Lubbock. Um, also 78% of our students are uh, coming in from 300 miles or further. So on that uh, little map that you see on the screen, those are the two circles or radiuses. And so uh, the first radius inside is going to be the 300 mile marker. And so 78% uh, of our students are coming from that region and out. And so that's definitely covering the whole entire nation as well. So you traveling to the city of Lubbock to join us here at Texas Tech, definitely rest assured that you are not making that journey alone. Uh, there is an airport in the city of Lubbock. Um, so if you're needing to fly home for whatever the case may be, holidays, family events, family emergencies, you are able to go ahead and have that uh, faster way of uh, transportation in the city of Lubbock and all the things that they have. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue with academics. What do we have to offer? What I will go ahead and do after I'm done uh, is go ahead and drop a link for our virtual uh, view book. It is going to discuss things that I did mention today, but it also is going to have a complete list of majors that we do offer here at Texas Tech. And so we do have 10 academic colleges. We have 150 programs to choose from, so that is quite a bit. We do have our law school that is number one in the state of Texas. We also opened up this past fall a vet school. So it, we are now the second option here in the state of Texas. There used to be only one vet school in the state and we now have another option for our students. And we also have our health science center that also aids our medical school, our nursing school, pharmacy school, dental school. So if you're wanting to go into a career in the medical field, there's definitely a lot of opportunity for our students here at Texas Tech. These are going to be the ten, uh, 10 colleges that the 115 majors are housed in. Uh, you are going to see on there quite a bit of colleges uh, on there. And so we do have our College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources. This is gonna be your animal science, your ag business, things like that are gonna be housed within this college. Our College of Architecture does require a, a mandatory study abroad. Uh, so that is a really cool requirement for students because in order to graduate from our College of Architecture, you do have to study abroad. Our College of Arts and Sciences does is the largest camp, is the largest college on campus. It houses 46 majors. Our Rawls College of Business um, does have a 93% job placement rate. So there's quite a bit of majors in there as well. And so our College of Education does have a 100% passing rate on the state exam. We have our College of Engineering that does have quite a bit of programs as well. Um, and so uh, we do have our College of Media and Communication, which is gonna be advertising, PR, things like that. And we also have our uh, visual uh, College of Visual and Performing Arts, which is going to be your dance, music, theater arts, and majors like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. We do have over 550 student organizations to choose from, so quite a bit. That is going to choose, that's going to range from sport related to major related to also just fun uh, organizations that you can be a part of, such as sororities, fraternities, things like that. We do have a requirement here at Texas Tech that you do stay in dorms that first year. It is going to be a requirement here with us. We are also part of the Big 12 Athletics Conference, and so we do have um, all of the games that are taking place on campus is going to already be included in your tuition. So you will just swipe your ID card and you're able to enter any game on campus, which is a really cool thing for most of our students to be able to go to our games. Admissions, 
you are able to complete the application on Apply Texas, the Common App, or the Coalition App. You only have to complete it once on any platform that you are comfortable with. We do also have a $75 application fee, as well as a fee waiver. Here at Texas Tech, we do have our own fee waiver here. Um, and so we are able to get you connected with that if you are wanting to apply for a fee waiver. Uh, we do have you self-report your grades here at Texas Tech. So you will have to report your grades through your through creating a Raider Connect portal. Um, and so that Creator Connect portal, once you submit the application, you'll be sent an email to, for the steps on how to create that and you'll submit your grades through there. We do so uh, much have- um, okay. So um, thank you so much. So we will now have all of our presenters turn on their cameras um, and I will ask just some uh, wrap up questions to kind of round out the evening. Um, so I would love you all to share in the same order in which you presented um, one piece of advice you would offer to someone going through the college application process right now. Yeah, so my advice would be, um, you know, don't be shy about questions, right? And you know, all of us here in this uh, Zoom room, uh, we are all uh, paid to help you, right? Like that's literally our job. So um, I always encourage, and I always encounter students who uh, try to navigate or try to figure things out on the website. And I always say, you know what, I'm always your go-to person. Just, you know, come to me directly. Um, so yeah, it, it, that's what, that's why we're here. Ask your, your millions of questions. We have all those millions of answers. Uh, so that, that's my advice. My advice would be to visit the different schools that you're looking at. So I think we would all agree that the visit piece is probably one of the most important pieces of your college search process. So um, definitely do that, especially if you're looking at small, medium, large schools, so you can get a good feel of, of um, the different schools and the sizes that you're looking at. Yeah, so I'd say visiting is great or try other virtual options besides these like virtual tours or virtual academic information sessions, the kind of more interactions you have with colleges, schools do keep track of it. So when you go to apply, it'll show that you went on all these different things and interacted with their admissions office. So one thing I would say in terms of your college search, in addition to all the great tips already shared, would be don't be afraid to go somewhere different than where your friends are going. So I, I know sometimes it's easy. I always talk to a lot of students to say, oh, you know, I'm looking here because my friends are going here, which is great, but make sure you're finding the right place for you. That's super important. And make sure to do your research and don't be afraid to break the mold a little bit. I would say my piece of advice is um, don't get comfortable with not knowing all the answers. Don't expect to know everything and, and, and anything right off the bat. And a second part to that, don't be afraid to reach out to current students uh, that go to that institution because they're going to tell the story uh, way better than, um, than any of us could because they are current students. Yeah, definitely. So a piece of advice that I would give is um, as you are going through all these colleges and finding what is the best suit for you, um, think about the four years that you're going to attend this school, but also think of how that university is gonna set you up for the future and the job that you've dreamed about and the job that you've thought about for quite some time. And so the university that you go to, um, think about how they're setting you up for that and the opportunities they have to set you up for quite an amazing future. So that would be my piece of advice. Awesome. Well, that is all such great advice. And thank you to everybody for joining us tonight and taking the time out of your schedules. Um, when you close this window, there will be a really quick five question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check the schedule and sign up for more sessions happening tonight and the rest of the week. You will be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us and thanks college admissions representatives. Have a great night.